Hey folks, Paul here with iCrack.com and today we are going to walk you through an AT&T GSM iPhone 4 repair. Um, while I power down the device, um, let's go ahead and walk you through some of the tools and instructions we have. Right here we have our flow chart which comes in every do-it-yourself kit. Um, it has very detailed images and instructions that will walk you through this, uh, the process of repairing your device very easily. Um, as well as in these kits, um, they have the following tools, your pentalobe, screwdriver, your Phillips head screwdriver, your flathead screwdriver, a nylon spudger, um, a screen a cleaning cloth, and a SIM card tray opening tool. We sell all of these tools and all-inclusive toolkits on our website, um, as well as individually in the shop. A few extras that we have here. Um, are a pair of tweezers and a small um, pocket knife. Um, really, any blade will work. These are not necessary for the repair as everything can be done without them. Um, they just make the process easier. Um, so let's begin. Now that the device is powered down, let's go ahead and use our SIM card tray opening tool and remove the SIM card. Now our flowcharts do have um, areas designated for all of your small parts and screws throughout the repair um, for you to place and which allows you to keep track of everything very easily. Uh, the next step is going to be remove the two bottom pentalobe screws. So we'll go ahead and do that now. To pull off the back, simply push towards the top and pull off, just like that. Now that we have the phone open, let's go over a few things inside of it right now. Um, first and foremost, this is your battery, um, and this is where it connects to the logic board. You've got your bottom speaker, charging port, um, your charging port and dock connector assembly flex cable, which connects to the logic board right here. Your logic board is in an L shape right here your camera, um, your vibrating motor right here, and, um, and so it's pretty standard. The majority of your connections are under this upper EMF shield, and we will be getting to those um, fairly soon. Now the first step, you're going to want to disconnect the battery. Um, there is one Phillips head screw holding the battery, down, the battery clip down. Under that as well is a grounding clip, which covers the antenna. So when we remove this, we'll unclip the battery as well as pull this grounding clip off. So we'll go ahead and remove this battery. After removing the screw, we're going to use our nylon spudger to gently pry up the clip, just like that. And you can see we have the grounding clip right here. So we'll set that aside. Now we're going to use our nylon spudger to pry the battery up out of the phone. There is a small amount of adhesive behind here. You're going to pry in between the battery and the midframe just like so, and you'll be able to hear the adhesive um, coming up as you're doing this. And there you have it. So right here, we actually have a, a small plastic um, flap, which you can use to pull the battery up like this. Um, it just generally tears very easy. We're going to leave it there, though, and to get it out of the way, move it over and stick it on the adhesive just like that. Now the next step is going to be removing the first EMF shield um, right here. We've got two Phillips head screws, so we're going to go ahead and unscrew those now. Now we will go ahead and pry up the charging port and dock connector um, assembly flex cable. We'll use our spudger to gently lift this connection up right here. There is adhesive under here, so you will, you will hear that when you pull it up. You'll simply pop this off and gently peel it back and fold it over. 
so that came off pretty easily. And there you have it. Now we have one Phillips head screw here in the corner of the logic board. Um, it actually holds down the logic board and bottom speaker at the same time. We are going to remove this screw right now. There is a very small blue jumper right here on the corner of the logic board. This jumper actually can be knocked off um, very easily. When this happens, um, you can disable your phone's ability to pick up service. So you want to be very careful about this blue jumper right here. Um, it is micro soldered on and if knocked off will need to be micro soldered back on. Let's go ahead and remove this screw now. Next, we'll remove the upper EMF shield, which actually also serves as a Wi-Fi antenna. There are five screws associated. One, two, three, four, five. Um, this screw on the farthest left is the widest, while this one at the top is the longest. These three are smaller. Um, what I like to do when removing these screws is moving from left to right in this motion and leaving them in that order. So when we come back in the reverse, we know exactly where each screw goes in going backwards. So we'll go ahead and remove those screws now. As you can see, this screw is much longer than the rest as it reaches the farthest into the frame. Now the shield does have a clip right here. You're going to want to, to pull the shield off. You're just going to want to pop that out and pull the EMS shield off. Just like that. So now you can see all of your connections right here. The LCD and digitizer from the screen, your camera. We'll go ahead and gently pry up the camera. Pull it out like so. Now, you do want to be careful when doing this in this area. There are a lot of very minute jumpers right here that can be knocked off and affect the functionality of both the front and rear facing camera. Um, the most common being um, when one of these is knocked off, the camera can get stuck um, with the shutter closed. Let's continue to pry these connections up. You can go ahead and push those back. Okay, so now that we've got these, got these connections up, we're going to go ahead and remove the other two screws holding the logic board down um, in order to remove the logic board. Um, there is one flathead right here and one Phillips head in the middle of the logic board under this uh, water indicator. We'll go ahead and remove the flathead. And before we actually take out this one last screw, we're going to go ahead and unclip this antenna right here. Now, you do want to be careful with this as both the antenna and its connection are fragile. This is the service antenna and damaging it can affect your phone's ability to connect just like this jumper can if you knock it off. So we're just going to gently pop it off just like that. As you can see it's a very small circle which can bend easily just like this can as well. You want to be careful because there is always a possibility that you can rip this off um, and have to replace the bottom speaker um, which we do have in our shop if that ever happens. So now that we've done that let's take out this one last screw right behind the indicator. You can go ahead and just unscrew it just like that. You, of course, want to leave the indicator there and not remove that. 
So now the logic board is ready to come out. We're going to gently lift it from the bottom right here, like this, and then pull out. You do want to be very gentle as the logic board is the brains of your phone and when damaged um, can permanently ruin the functionality of your phone. So now that the logic board's out, we're going to go ahead and set that aside. Let's go ahead and take out the last screw that's holding the bottom speaker down right here in the right corner. Now when pulling out your bottom speaker, you're going to want to pull out like this. And there you have it. There's your bottom speaker. Now the last thing we're going to remove from the phone is your vibrator right here. It's held by two screws. One longer screw right here and one much shorter screw right here. As you can see, it's a fairly long screw. And this is a much shorter screw. So here's your vibrating motor right here. Now that we've got everything out of the way, we're going to begin um, loosening uh, or taking out the corner screws and loosening the six screws on the side. We're going to go ahead and take out the four corner screws first. Now, the biggest difference um, for this phone um, versus the CDMA and 4S are that the four corner screws are the same minus one right here, which technically is not in the corner, it's just off to the side, just a very little bit. We're going to remove these four screws first. Now these screws are small, so let's go ahead and take our time and be patient with it. Now that we have the four corner screws out, we're going to go ahead and loosen the six screws on the side of the iPhone. Now these screws are, are much larger and they have washers behind them. So it's not entirely necessary to pull them out. All you need to do is give them a few twists and loosen them up. Okay, now the screws are loosened, so we're ready to remove the screen from the mid-frame. Now when getting ready to remove the screen from the mid-frame, there, it is good to know that there is adhesive here at the top of the phone and adhesive here at the bottom of the phone. Also, just like with the CDMA, we're going to, the home button is going to stay behind connected to the frame. Um, and you can actually see right here where the home button flex cable comes through the frame and connects right here. We're going to apply some heat with a standard heat gun. Um, we sell these in our shop, but also a hair dryer works just as well. Now this is an extra. Um, it, like I said at the beginning of the video, it simply makes the repair much easier. You are always going to be able to remove this screen um, whether or not you are able to apply heat to the adhesive. There you go. Now when removing the screen from the mid-frame, I'm going to use this Gerber 2-inch blade right here. Any other blade will suffice. We do sell this on our, in our store. We also do sell um, the iSESMO opening tool, which works just as well um, and serves the exact same purpose. But I'm going to use um, this blade. Now I like to start from this bottom corner right here. And you just want to stick it in between the frame and or the screen and the front and the mid frame. Now here, you're going to want to be careful. This is glass and it can cut you. Um, and right here we have a, a pretty cracked um, bottom half of a screen. 
So this glass is going to scatter and as well stay behind on the adhesive um, of the midframe and will not come with the screen. So you do want to be careful when doing this. As you can see, the frame's coming up, but glass is staying behind. We will clean that here in just a second. You can hear the adhesive um, coming up. And there you go. Now these two cables are going to feed through the midframe, just like so. So here you can see the home button's been left behind because it is connected to the frame. Um, and you can see a lot of glass as well was left behind. Now to clean this glass in the most efficient and easiest way, as well as safest, we recommend that you use your pry tool or blade or something of the sort, your schedule will work just as well, or tweezers, to get under this adhesive and pull up the adhesive. This will bring the glass with it. So as you can see, this is now much, much cleaner. Um, the same thing can happen up at the top, and if, it, if that's the case, we'll do the same exact thing, and we'll remove the glass as well as the adhesive. The main thing, before you put on your new screen, you want to make sure that this area, these areas, as well as the middle, are as clean as possible. If any debris is left behind, um, glass-wise or anything like that, seating the screen is going to be very difficult, and it can also damage it. Now, before we move on to the new screen, um, a small detail, one that's not entirely necessary, but um, you know, here at iCracked. Uh, we, we strive to put everything back the way it is and have your phone in, in the most original condition possible. There is a small plastic ring on the back side of the original screen that sits around the front facing camera right here. Now the front facing camera does not move around, but it's always good to put that ring back. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this blade or our pry tool to get under that small plastic ring right there and peel it off and go ahead and reseat it right back around the camera, just like so. So now let's take a look at our new screen. As you can see, it's it's got the hole for the home button. Um, you've got your LCD and digitizer cable right here. And you also have a, a small protective, a thin protective film over the LCD. You're going to want to, of course, remove that before seating the new screen. So let's go ahead and do that now. So you can see we've got a brand new LCD right here. Now when seating the screen onto the midframe, we're going to be want we're going to want to be very careful when feeding these digit LCD and digitizer cables through the midframe right here. Now on on a side note, we take a closer look the digitizer cable has a small loop right here on it. Now when feeding these cables through the midframe, it is very easy for this loop to get caught on the frame and get pinched between the screen and the midframe. You want to be extremely careful when feeding these cables through and be absolutely sure that this loop is not caught. So we're going to begin feeding these cables through just like so, leading with the digitizer, like that. When you get to this point, you're going to want to look down and make sure that this loop right here is going to go all the way through the midframe. You can use your spudger to direct it right through. just like that. You'll be able to immediately know if that was done correctly by having these two cables the exact same length. Now after you've got that fed through 
It's now time to feed the other pins um, through the frame. Now, these side pins can easily be pushed in between the washer and screw head of the side screws. This is okay, but going back to um, our goal to return every phone to its original um, functionality and the way it was made, we are going to be sure that those pins are behind both the screw head and the washer. You can use your spudger to direct those pins and washers. See here, these are in between. We'll go ahead and just slide that back out just a little bit. Make sure everything goes right back in the way it should. Okay, so there you have it. All the pins are seated. They're incorrectly, and the screen is sitting flush. Now, we're going to make sure when we tighten these screws back up and put in the other four corner screws that we're keeping the screen flush with the midframe so it doesn't loosen up or have any space in between them um, while we're doing that. We're actually going to put the four corner screws in first. Um, a little trick uh, is to do that because if you tighten these screws first, the six side screws, there is always the possibility that the pins will be a little off in the corners and it makes screwing in those four corner screws much more difficult. So let's go ahead and begin with the four corner screws. Okay, we've got our four corner screws in. The screen's looking nice and flush. So let's go ahead and tighten the six side screws. Now, simply moving in reverse of all of our steps, we're going to go ahead and take the vibrator and put it in next. Now with this, because those two screws are different, if you remember, this one was much longer and this one was much smaller, we're actually going to put the smaller one in first. It allows the longer screw to direct itself better into the frame. Next, we're going to put the bottom speaker back in the phone and tighten the one screw on the right. We're going to put the bottom speaker in with the bottom going in first, like so, and pressing it down at the top. Before you push all the way down, there are these little springs right here. You're going to want to push them down like this to make sure that the bottom speaker goes all the way in. Those springs are going to fall behind this small ledge right here. So holding that snug, let's go ahead and put this one screw in the right corner. See, as you can see, they can pop back out. It's a quick fix. So now that we have the bottom speaker in, it's time to put in the logic board. Before we do that, let's go ahead and adjust the LCD and digitizer cables from the screen. What I like to do is use this finger to push them up, but use this one to push the bottom of them down and get them to sit right in the midframe, just like that. It makes pushing in the logic board a lot easier. So we have our logic board. If you'll notice, we also have a small piece of rubber right here you know, this can easily fall off, um, but you want to keep it there um, because it is there to prevent any disruptive abrasion between the logic board and then the two cables right here. How we're going to do this is the exact, same, the exact opposite as how we pulled it out. We're going to put the top in first and push down. So let's go ahead and make sure that none of the cables are in the way. Let's go ahead and drop this in. You also want to make sure that this is out of the way, of course, 
and then also your antenna is out of the way. And there you go. It's in there nice and flush. Let's go ahead and put the two screws back in. Let's put the flathead in first and then the Phillips head right here. You want to be careful when tightening this one. If there's any resistance, you're going to know that something's under the logic board or that it's not seated correctly. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and put the Phillips head back in this corner as well. It's a few steps back, but since we've got the logic board in, you might as well. Now that we've done that, we're going to proceed with connecting everything back to the logic board. Let's grab our camera, slide it right back in, and connect that. With each of these connections, you're going to want to be very careful. Use gentle pressure and just kind of feel around for it. You'll hear a snap whenever, or a small click when you get them in. And let's get this antenna in right here. You want to be careful, like I said, when removing it. This is what picks up service. You can use your finger or your spudger to move it right over the connection and pop it down. As you can see, it's right in there nice and snug. Before we put any of the EMF shields back on, we're going to finish by connecting this and putting in the battery to test it. That way, if there are any issues, you can quickly unclip the battery and you already have everything exposed to start troubleshooting. Let's go ahead and peel this back. Grab our battery. Pop it in. You don't need to screw it in just yet. Let's insert our SIM. Let's go ahead and power it on to test it. So we have our Apple logo. It's booting up. Everything looks good. We'll go ahead and test the home button. We're getting a nice good click right there. Everything's flush. So you can immediately see it has service. Vibrate's working. Everything seems good to go. Let's go ahead and power the device off and finish the repair. Unclip the battery just to prevent any power from transferring while we're doing this. We'll go ahead and take our upper EMF shield and sit it back in there. Should fit right in. We'll proceed to put these screws in. Now remember, this is the longest screw right here. The rest being the same size. We'll put in the smallest EMF shield now. Last step, we need to take our grounding clip, cover the antenna with it. Pop the battery clip right in place. And screw in this one last screw that holds it down. Go ahead and power it back on. There you go. Slide the back on real quick. Just 
push down just like that, and put in the two pentalob screws. And there you have it. There's your iPhone 4 AT&T GSM repair. Um, if you have any questions or problems, please give us a call on our 877 number or visit us online at iCrack.com. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon.